Hello everybody. It is Sunday morning and it is time for Sarah Baptist Open Studio Part 2. Here we are. Um, okay, so yesterday was part one and I showed you the first part of the Open Studio. We had a nice chat. Um, excuse me. First of all, Sarah Baptist, in case you missed part one, Sarah Baptist, I'm an urban landscape artist. Um, all the paintings I showed yesterday and today are on my website. That's sarahbaptistart.com. And there's a menu item there that says open studio. So if there are any paintings that I show you and you want to get a better look at them, go take a look there. And you can get close up looks and look at everything much more closely. So, and I also wrote a blog about this whole process. So, uh, Go check that out and also sign up for my email list so you get behind the scenes looks and exclusive offers when you're one of my subscribers. So please check that out. So, and if you missed part one and are interested in looking at that, that's on replay. So you can check that out whenever you have some time. So um, I wanna welcome you and thank you for taking time to be with me here today or whenever you are watching this. I appreciate that very much. This is my fifth open studio. Just to recap a little bit, in case you didn't see number one. Uh, I've been painting for six years, been doing the open studio for five. I really enjoy opening up my home and um, this is a wonderful way for me to share my whole body of work and some, some things that people don't always see that I do. And meet new people, it's a wonderful way for us to just exchange ideas um, and with COVID, not everybody's willing or wants to come into the home. So we're switching things up this year with this virtual thing. So we're making history with the first virtual studio tour. So I'm new to this, um, <laughs> bear with me. Uh, I'm not one to usually talk about my art. I am a painter for a reason. <laughs> I'm a visual person, not a, uh, talker. So we're learning as we go, and I appreciate your patience with me on that end of things. So, um, so yesterday we talked a little bit about my history. I started as a set designer, and uh, as a set designer, I uh, showed a picture of a set that I had a little model. Go check that out. It's really kind of interesting. I really always kind of like structure and uh, uh, it kind of relates to the kind of scenes I'm interested in now. So it's really a through line as to what my tastes are and why I'm attracted to the, same, the scenes that I am today with urban landscape. So that was kind of an interesting, um, I suggest you take a, a look at that video just for that reason. Um, and then I started in with plein air, which is going on location and painting. Uh, did that really exclusively for the first three years I painted. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, I think again, instead of plain, painting trees and horses and cows, because I like structure and rhythm, and I was just attracted to urban scenes. I like alleys, I like the texture and grit of urban. But then a lot of people were asking me if I did bigger paintings. When you're doing plein air, they tend to be smaller because you don't have a lot of time. The light changes. So that's when I started moving into larger works and studio works. We talked about that yesterday. And then that kind of morphed into an interest I have in, in abstraction. And so I have all these things going on, which I think make my work more interesting. And when you see the studio tour and come to the house or go to my website, you'll see all these kind of interests and they all, they all work together and they make it interesting for me. And when you see my body of work, I think it makes it interesting for the viewer as well. So those are some of the things we talked about yesterday. And we're just gonna pick up where we left off. There are two more rooms to go through and my cameraman Mitchell has been doing a fantastic <laughs> job. Uh, my wife Jackie is monitoring the questions, so please, if you have questions along the way or comments, um, put those in the chat. Um, we like to hear from you and know that you're here, 
and Facebook loves that too, so it helps me out. So hmm. even if you're just watching, just say hi. Um, that's that helps. That helps. So um, okay, and I have a cheat sheet here because I'm not a verbal person. <laughs> so forgive me for that a little bit. Um, okay, so um, we're gonna start right here with this. This is one of the. Uh, this is obviously a studio piece because it is so large. Um, it's a three foot by three foot piece. I did it based on a photograph I took at an Amtrak station. It's called Waiting, um, obviously. I think it's, that's obvious. People waiting for the train, right? Um, I started adding people into my paintings, I think about a year and a half, maybe about a year and a half ago too. I, I started years ago, 20 years ago, doing figure sketching and drawing. And um, when I first started doing urban, I didn't want people in the paintings. I kind of like the starkness without them. Um, but I've just started introducing them. There are times I want people in the paintings and there are other times I do. So um, I really love this piece. So. And it's, it's interesting because you can start seeing some of the abstraction in the windows that's, you know, that's starting to filter in to this painting. Uh, but, so that's called waiting. And uh, let's go into this painting. So if you look straight ahead, there's another studio piece with a person, with a figure. Um, and this is based off, it's, this is called Bus Stop 4. I have done, obviously, three bus stop paintings. They have all since sold. Um, I used, I would go down, here I'll show you. I had gone down in Wilmington, there are some Rodney Square where people, they've since changed this, but uh, people would congregate. It was a major hub for uh, people to catch the bus. And I would just sit down and do little sketches of people sitting and waiting for the bus. I love doing this stuff. Um, so I have, you know, and th these are just some other, I do, I do go out and just do some sketches sometimes. Sometimes it's right before painting, you know, but sometimes I was practicing doing cars because I really was awful at doing cars when I first started. I kind of feel like I'm not great at doing cars yet. Other people say I do okay. But, uh, but anyway, so with the people, um, this is one where I, I took some photos, but I also would just practice doing people in poses sitting naturally. And uh, I did that. I did that painting. So I love that kind of just natural, waiting, thoughtful, you know. They all have a story. You wonder what that person is what their life is, what their circumstance is, and, you know. I, like, I, I don't want to tell what I think about it, because I want, I like the fact that you look at that and bring your thoughts to it. Um, that's kind of what I miss about the interchange <laughs> of having people come here, because then we can have that conversation about it, and I like to hear what people bring to it and what, what they see. So that's, that's something I do miss about having people come. Although we do have some people who made appointments today and I'm excited about that. Uh, so I also wanted to point out on the mantle, there are a couple pieces here. Um, and what I kind of wanted, one of the things I wanted to point out is how I'm displaying the art. Uh, well, you don't always have to put art on the wall. And you also don't always even have to frame it. So this is just a, a, I think it's a plate stand and unframed. And it's just a, a very inexpensive way to, because framing can cost you an arm and a leg. Um, and it's a, it's a wonderful way to display art. So there's a tip for you <laughs> right there. So. This is one I did 
just a couple weeks ago done on Wilmington, Delaware, and this is a new format I'm, I'm playing with. I really, I really kind of like it. So I think this is the first one I've done in this, it's called a panorama format. So. What do you like about it? Well, I've been working in square format for years, and I, I picked that format. Why did I pick that format? <laughs> Um, I thought it was a very contemporary format. It was different than everybody else's, which is something I wanted to be. I think it fit the urban, uh, the urban vibe I was doing. Uh, but this, this, I, I feel a little trapped now sometimes with that square. There are times when I'm, like for instance, this that bridge has that horizontal. And so there are times I'm out there, I'm in this square, and what I'm seeing has more of that horizontal uh, access to it. And I'm, I'm, I, with the square, I'm stuck. So, uh, and also with some of the wires, some of the intersections, it's just, I, I'm, running, I'm running out of space with mm -hmm. the square. So this, this seems more conducive to some of the scenes I'm seeing now. And so. Are there new challenges with doing panoramas over squares? Yeah. Um, are there new challenges? There are always new challenges. Uh, yeah, the, um, yeah, it's just a matter of, of where, how to place it on the canvas, you know, how to place it. And I'm, I'm not one, I don't usually like to cut things off. So for instance, cutting this building off, uh, it's kind of a, feels a little weird to me. Um, so that's, you know, that's not natural. So, uh, and then for instance, I did, let's back up. This is the one I did and this is big, so this one just covering all the territory. Uh, <clears throat> and I really should have spent, I, I, I was in a hurry with this one. This one I spent probably about a little over two hours. My parking meter ran out and I needed to come back and get ready for the open studio. So just covering this much ground. And I wanted to do this you know, that was tiny, that was small. That's the thing with Panorama. I think I need to go a little bit larger than that guy and a little smaller than this guy. So finding that that sweet spot of a good size for me is, is gonna be interesting. But just covering this much ground was a bit of a challenge. And, uh, but I, I kind of, I, I think I like the fact that your eye kind of travels across it, too, which with the square you're kind of there, and and I've I've enjoyed that. I'm I'm not going to give up the square. That fits a lot of the scenes I paint, but you know it's kind of nice to mix things up, and yeah, yeah, try some new things sometimes. So we'll we'll continue experimenting with this. But <sighs> okay, so. So, well, so where are we? Where, let's go over here to this little wall. So here are a whole bunch of six by six plein air that I have done. Uh, one of the things that, I, so last night, I don't know if you watched, I showed, I did a little video on my plein air kit. Uh, what I did not mention, I did say, I have to add, I'm a wimpy plein air painter. And that plein air kit is what I use when I get out of the car and paint. And it's nice out. What I haven't mentioned is I, when I, it's not nice out <laughs> and I want to go out and plein air paint, I paint in my car. So, um, and that's one of the reasons that I work as small as I do. Um, I'm going to grab this mitch. Okay, so... I have this little contraption, which I showed that I put use on my easel when I'm 
out painting, but I also use this when I'm painting in my car. I can put, this happens to be an eight inch by eight inch panel, but it works with a six inch by six inch panel as well. And I will put this on my steering wheel, push my seat, driver's seat back as far as I can, and I put a towel over the drive, over the steering wheel and put the solvent in the drink thing and put my paints out on the passenger side and I can be set up to paint in five minutes. And that's how I have painted a couple of these. I painted this guy that way. I painted this guy this way. I painted that one that way. So I do that for a number of reasons. I'll do that one because it's cold out. Um, if, because if you're in, it can be 40 degrees out, but if it's sunny and you're in your car, it's really kind of toasty. I'll also do that if it's an iffy neighborhood because urban landscape, lone female, uh, it can be a little dicey. And <laughs> um, I know some males that'll go into those neighborhoods, but uh, I, I want to be a little careful and I'm not that, I'm not that bad. <laughs> so uh, there, I have gone into some neighborhoods and, and uh, I just stay in the car. And I have, I actually went into a not so dicey neighborhood and didn't have the car locked and somebody actually got in my car. <laughs> so I have had some stories, um, but it was, it was fine, it was fine. Um, but, uh, so, these are wonderful little paintings. I love them. They, I can be very fluid with these. They're really fun to do. They're a wonderful price point for people to start collecting original art. Um, these are all 225, they come framed. And this weekend, up to midnight tonight, it is free shipping. So um, they're available on the website, sarahbaptistart.com. Try to keep the price points low. And framing can, I mean, framing can cost you money. So the fact that they come framed and you can just hang them on your wall, that's, that's just a nice, Nice neat bonus. So, um, so these. That's another. That's another one I did in the car. And uh, so, these three paintings I did this April. It was part of what I call the quarantine series. So this April was wet and cold. It was also we were all sheltered at home. And I wasn't sure that we were supposed to go out, you know, stay in, stay in. Don't know what the rules were, but I wanted to get out and be painting. And so I have a lot of windows, a lot of painted colored walls in my home, a lot of doorways. I thought, I'm just going to paint scenes in my house. So that's what I did. And I called it the quarantine series, 1 through 21. Throw them up on Facebook and on the website and Instagram and everybody seemed to love seeing our home and it was really a fun series to do. I did two or three paintings a week through April and May, I think it was. And it was just a joy. These are eight by eight and they are also framed, obviously. So. I was, it was just interesting to see the response I got. And it was really a great response. And I think people, you know, got an insight into the home. And it was, a, it was just fun. And I didn't realize how many paintings we had just in the house, you know, that I could do right here. And it got me painting. It was, it was just a lot of fun to do. So, okay, so let's see. Let me grab my... Grab my cheat sheet, and we will go into the next room. This is our dining room usually. It's a little set up a little differently. I'll have Mitchell just scan the, like I said, this is not set up just for open studio. This is the way we live. <laughs> 
We live with this many paintings all the time. This is kind of the way I store the paintings. And one of the things I wanted to say is, um, one of the things about urban landscape I haven't said that I really enjoy is that I think people live in these scenes every day and don't really see them. So if you look at my website, there's a little tagline that says unveiling, what does it say? <laughs> unveiling the extraordinary in the ordinary. And that's what I hope I do with these paintings. Um, and again, the website sarabaptistart.com. I am Sarah Baptist if you joined us late. This is um, part two of my open studio tour. Um, and welcome if you joined us late. So this is our dining room, and yes, the artwork is always hung like this. It's a great way to store paintings. And again, urban landscape is my thing. I love it. I just, I think that, as I said, people walk through their lives. They see these scenes every single day. You do your commute. You go get coffee at these shops. You walk back alleys or you park in a back alley. And... I see beauty, quote unquote. I, beauty isn't quite the word, but um, I haven't come up with the word. I, but I see design, I see color, I see um, rhythms, and I, it makes me want to paint them and share them. And, and that gets me excited when I see those scenes. And that's why I, I'm attracted to them. And luckily, when I paint those scenes and I share them with people, there seem to be enough people who also respond to them. And that's why I'm sharing them with you today. Um, and I've had a number, it's interesting, I have a number of people who respond, they see my paintings and we talk about them and I'll get emails and I'll get people sending me pictures or saying, I stopped at a red light the other day and I looked at the poles and wires and I've never done that before. <laughs> so they uh, have a new appreciation for some of the things that they are around them every single day. So I think that's really cool. Um, that's something I really enjoy. I, I think, you know, just looking at our surroundings every day is... Uh, Sometimes it's hard, you know, our brains are in other places, but I think it's also important. And uh, so anyway, that's what I do. That's what I try to do, is kind of unveil um, these things. So, okay, so here we go. We have, uh, so one of the things, so we'll pivot over this way. Yesterday I mentioned in the other room that one of the, so I go around and do these urban landscapes, and that's wonderful. I love them. I love alleys. I love... But uh, a couple of years ago, I was trying to think of just a different perspective, a different point of view. Where could I go? What could I do? And I came up with parking garages. So I started going up to the top floor of parking garages and doing plein air, and I just fell in love with that. I hope to do a lot more of that. But up here, you'll see... This is one of the paintings I did. It gives you a completely different perspective and different angles. And that is what I love about that sort of... Um, and then these are two paintings that I did in the studio. When I'm up in, up in the garages, I take a lot of photographs. And then in the winter months when it's cooler, that's when I do the studio work. And that's when I would do these larger paintings. Um, this one is called Break. That's <laughs> Break. The guys were on break. Another another instance where I have added figures into the work. And this one, this one I was just fascinated with the contrast of light and dark. Obviously, uh, really like that. And of course, that those sketches of cars that I did. 
kind of came in handy. <laughs> so working on that. So let's see what else. And then okay. Oh, and I did. I wanted to mention here's the case. Somebody asked yesterday about plain air and if things ever happen that I have to change the painting. And this mail truck, I mentioned this mail truck painting. This is a painting I did and I set up on this corner and there were, I really wanted the painting to be about that angled pole. And there was a little painting behind that, or there's a building behind that mail truck or something. But it was supposed to be about that pole being silhouetted in the sky and the buildings being on the side. Well, I start the painting, I'm well into it, and up pulls this mail truck. And I said a few choice words probably, but I'm like, okay, how long can that mail truck be there? You know, he's gonna run in, he'll be there for 10 or 15 minutes, I'll just keep painting. So I kept painting, 10 minutes goes by, 20 minutes go by, I've, I've painted what I can, around. I mean, you can't finish this side of the painting and this side of the painting and have the middle completely undone. So I'm like, okay, you know, it's been a long time and it's just sitting there. There's no sign of one coming back. I said, I guess I'm painting the mail truck. That was the choice. So I was smart enough. I have learned. I whipped out my phone and took a picture of the mail truck there. Because I thought to myself, as soon as I start painting this mail truck, he's going to come out and drive away. <laughs> so I started painting the mail truck, and about halfway through painting the mail truck, he got it. <laughs> he came out and drove away. But I had enough of the mail truck in there that it was fine. I just, I did have to use the photograph for um, some of the logo detail. But, uh, you know, that is, that is an instance where the painting and being out doing plain air, you have to be somewhat flexible and go with the flow. <laughs> but you know what? I, I love the fact that the mail truck's in there. I mean, one in the story, but it kind of makes the painting now. And, uh, you know, anyway, that, that was a fun little story. And, uh, okay, so... Just Here's a painting that is part of uh, when I was up on top and looking down. Another, obviously, you see more of the street. And these are just more plain air. I have a few, just a few. So. And. I think, I think that just about, oh, this is one too. This is one I did in, um, I was at a, at a hospital parking lot. And this is Wilmington. And Wilmington Hospital. And so that's a parking garage. So there are a number of parking garage ones I've done in here. So anyway. Okay, so this was part two of Open Studio Tour. I just want to really thank everybody for, uh, I just want to thank you for being here. I want, whether you're watching it live or watching it on replay, um, this whole virtual thing has been very new to me. I, I appreciate your support and watching. And I really believe that original art can help inspire us and lift us every day. And on that note, um, I wish you well. I hope you'll check out my website, sarahbaptistart.com. Join the email list and I will be live tonight at 7 p.m. in my studio. I hope you'll join me then. Have a wonderful day and take care.